right guys, I have a brand new project to be doing and that's cleaning the Game Boy Color. Now what I'm also going to be doing is I'm also going to be fixing this bad boy up because uh, it has some problems and I will go over them in a second. But the first problem you will automatically see here is battery corrosion. Very bad battery corrosion. I have never had such bad battery corrosion in a Game Boy Color before. First thing before I go into cleaning this, I put in batteries as well as I uh, put in a game and I will show you what the problem is with this. Alright, so screen is very messed up, very dark. And the A button doesn't work. How lovely. As well as the volume doesn't work. It's all the way maxed out. It's all the way down. No volume. But, however, I did check and the headphone jack does work. So that just means that the speaker is dead. So, we're going to open up this bad boy. So, what you're going to need to open up this Game Boy as well as to clean battery corrosion is you are going to need alcohol, Q-tips, a cleaning kit for the cartridge slot, Mr. Clean Magic Eraser for any of the scuffs that you can easily get off, Phillips head screwdriver, tri-wing screwdriver, can't get this uh, at any store, you have to get this online, and for the battery corrosion you are going to need white vi vinegar, and a little cup holder for the uh, battery terminals because I'm going to be soaking them. Now, I originally got this like this. It didn't have a battery cover and it was just corroded. I ended up buying a battery cover online. It's an original battery cover, not a new one. And I bought this online on eBay as well as just in case that I cannot fix this motherboard I bought a new motherboard and a new LCD screen. Now the motherboard is in, however the LCD screen isn't in, but I'm hoping it's just that if I replace the motherboard, if I can't fix this one, I have a new one already in. So first things first, you're going to want to remove all six of the screws using your tri-wing screwdriver. So the top two, middle two, and bottom two. Now I'm going to say this. When you're playing with battery acid and corrosion, make sure you wash your hands after you do this project because you do not want to be putting your fingers on any food or anyone else's hands with that battery acid on your hands. So make sure that you're washing your hands as well as uh, being careful about touching all the battery corrosion. So next, after you get all your batteries out, you're going to want to lift up. And... Okay, well, there's corrosion in here. All these blue specks in here. Yeah, that's battery corrosion. Mmm, that's just, that makes me so happy. So, oh geez, yep. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to take out the battery ports out of this little area here, and I'm going to use my screwdriver to do that to see about cleaning these. Now, I can replace the motherboard, however I can't replace these terminals, you can, but I didn't buy any extras. So I'm going to take out these terminals here and I'm going to put some vinegar in here and soak them. So once I got the battery terminal out, which that's just lovely looking, here's the terminal, all caked in corrosion. I put in the white vinegar and all those bubbles that you see there, that is it taking care of the battery acid. Now, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put a timer on for these terminals because they can't be sitting in here any longer than around 5 to 10 minutes. I usually just keep them in for 5 minutes for my own sake. Um, as for this, I would suggest using a Q-tip and the white vinegar and trying to get at this battery acid. 
After the five minutes of the terminal sitting in white vinegar, it should look pretty, pretty nice. This one wasn't too corroded. I even cleaned up in here a little bit, but I'm still going to deep clean this. Now, I did spot clean some of these parts with vinegar. Like, it was pretty blue on the motherboard, but I still can't get all the corrosion off of this. My problem is, is that these still worked with batteries in, even though it's so corroded. But what I would suggest, if you have a soldering iron, is I would suggest buying uh, new ports, it'll come with two of them, and you're going to have to solder them in. Now, I will see if it still works, because I did get the corrosion off of it. But uh, my next step would be to remove these three screws and clean the rest of the corrosion that's probably going to be under here. As well as you're going to want to gently pull out the ribbon cable, which I will just show you manually here. You just want to pull up on these two tabs here, carefully. And then you could do a couple of things. You can just pull the ribbon cable out, like so. Or you can, once you unscrew these with the Phillips head, uh, pull it out with it. What I also forgot to mention is you might want to remove your power switch because you could drop it and lose it. So just keep it with your stuff to clean. And I removed all the screws, so now we will lift up on the motherboard and see what horrors lie under this thing. Well, the first thing you see is corrosion got to the pads here. Part of the reason why the A button wasn't working as well as yeah there's some corrosion up here where the screen is hence probably why the screen's going dark as well as there's corrosion on the buttons. Heavily on the A, A, B, A and B buttons but not on the start and select hence why the start and select buttons work. So uh, I'm going to try and spot clean this and hopefully maybe I'll get some color back into the Game Boy Color. But I'm going to clean it. I'm going to clean these and hope to God that maybe, just maybe, I might have fixed this. But it doesn't look like the corrosion got to the LCD screen. So I don't think the LCD screen is the problem. I think it's the motherboard. But we will see. And I hope to God that maybe I can fix this. All right, I cleaned these to the best of my ability, as well as the conductive pads, and there's the aftermath there. So I am going to see how well this cleaned up. Now, if the screen still isn't fixed, then I'm going to have to resort to a new motherboard. But this is all part of the cleaning process, as well as the fun of seeing if this can be fixed. Now, if this motherboard cannot be fixed, I am probably just going to use this for parts. Now, unfortunately, the speaker doesn't work as well as one of these is really corroded. But I could use this as a parts, as well as some of the capacitors, the headphone jack, and some of uh, like the infrared ports here, anything here, could be salvaged as parts. But we'll see how it all turns out. So I'm going to assemble this back together and I will see how this works. Okay, so I just quickly reassembled this and put one screw in the back of this and one screw in the motherboard just because I didn't want to have to undo all of that. So here's the moment of truth to see if this motherboard is salvageable. And it doesn't look like it. Okay, well, luckily, I bought a spare motherboard and hopefully it should fix our problem. It's kind of unfortunate that it kind of had to resort to this, but it is what it is. So here's the new motherboard and the speaker does work and it's an original speaker. So this is what the motherboard should look like, not corroded, cough, cough, to the child that left their batteries in their system. 
and completely fucked this system, at least the motherboard up. So I'm going to disassemble and clean up this system. So after finding out about that disappointing detail, now you're going to want to clean this. So you're going to want to remove all the contact pads and clean them because they're probably dirty and disgusting. This isn't bad, but I'm just disappointed. Okay, that is. That's disgusting. And we will remove D-pad. Yep. And... Jeez. I didn't think a button would be that hard to get out, but that's the A button. And then what you can also remove is the infrared thing. So you can remove that and clean that. Now in just a second, I will show you how you can get your LCD screen out without completely breaking it. But here's the uh, D-pad. It's actually not bad. Here's start and select. So let me get this bad boy out. Okay, so how you want to remove an LCD screen from a Game Boy, Game Boy Color, you want to use it like the ice cube tray method that you would normally do at your own house and just gently pry it off just like so. So there's the LCD screen. Now, like I said, it doesn't look like it was affected at all by the uh, corrosion, so it looks to be in good standing. So I will just put this over here. And now you can clean the front case of your Game Boy, just like that. So now we will head over to the sink. Now you, what you're going to want to do is have very, very hot soapy water and you're going to want to deep clean all these and I'd say you want to keep them in the hot soapy water for about 10-15 minutes because you don't want these stickers to pry off too easily or the front screen here to come off because the screen's scratched but it's not too scratched. So, and make sure that the hot water is like hot as hell like you don't want to touch it and there we go put all the buttons in there they should sink everything should sink in there there we go and put the timer on for about 10 minutes now if you want to know what soap I use for these I use Dawn dish soap because that cleans up anything once everything's all clean you're gonna want to let everything dry for quite a few hours um, I'd wait until everything's all dry, even in the little screw ports here. Now, what I would suggest, which I forgot to mention beforehand, was you're going to want to use probably a new toothbrush, not an old used one because that's disgusting. You'd want to use a new toothbrush to clean all the divots, everything that you can on this system because you want to get all those little parts. So now what you're going to want to do is let them dry. Now, I know I didn't include the battery cover and the cleaning, but that's because the owner that sent me this on eBay said she had already deep cleaned it, so I didn't really need to bother cleaning it. Now, you really do want to wait a few hours to, until you put this together because you do not want to put a motherboard with electronic parts and mix them with wet parts of plastic. So make sure that everything is completely dry before you reassemble anything. So I will be back here in a few hours. So once everything's all dry, you're going to want to reassemble this. So put your buttons back in, your screen in. So I will put the screen back in. And the buttons have specific places now. B button goes here, and the A button goes there, 
There's the pads. And there we go. Then you can put your infrared piece back in. I'll do that in a second because I need two hands as well as you can put your motherboard back in. Make sure that the little divot here is right in that corner there for your speaker. And proceed to put the three Phillips head screws in there. Next what you're going to want to do is put your power switch back in as well as put your ribbon cable back in. Like so, kind of, there we go. Why is it this? There we go. And make sure those tabs are down. And then your power switch goes in like that and it's got a click so there's the off and then we will put on the bottom half and then you're going to want to put in your six tri-wing screws back in here the next thing you may want to do after you get all your tri-wing screws in is you're going to want to clean this now if you don't have this, you can use the credit card method, but you have to have like a cloth-like thing around your credit card, so you have to be careful with that, as well as Mr. Clean Magic Eraser to get any scuffs that you see that you want to get rid of. Like I have a couple down here that I want to try and get rid of. So we will look at the final product in one moment. Okay, so now we are to the final product. Now I will note about the Mr. Clay Magic Eraser is that you don't want to put it on any of the like logos or anything because it is pretty much like sandpaper and it will remove the logos. So just be careful with that. So let's hope that the final product is good. Oh, there's noise. Oh, the screen. Yes. Oh my gosh. It works. Oh my gosh, yes. So, there is the final product. So it was the motherboard that was freaking out on this. The LCD screen was fine. So now I have a perfectly working pink Game Boy Color. Hope you all enjoyed the cleaning and restoring of this Game Boy Color. And I will see you guys later. See ya!